Okay, so according to what, oh, we're getting some flicker. Ooh, that, ooh, oh, that's nice. This problem is gonna be around for a very long time. We're gonna put the new RAM in here and see what happens. Please work, here we go. Three, two, one. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too, but do you know who's not doing great? The owner of this MacBook Pro. So, they contacted me with the Crazy Ken signal, patent pending, and they sent me some videos. I first saw the checkered screen and I was a little worried that it could be motherboard failure because I'm sure we've all seen that before. I've seen similar issues with the checkered flag where it wasn't the whole motherboard logic board failing, it was just a little graphical hiccup. A reboot later and everything was fine. But then he sent me this video. Three beeps. On this particular system, that means there's an issue with the RAM. So we're gonna boot it up, see if we can recreate the issue. And if need be, I do have some spare parts, some extra RAM. Not sure if it's gonna be compatible with this model, but we'll find out together. Ready? Let's boot her up. All right, we got a white screen and a kernel panic message. So this definitely had some, some kind of crash. <laughs> it's not beeping though, at least. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's, that's not giving me a lot of confidence right now. Um, yeah, shit. I may need to consult a, a second opinion on this matter. Let me actually pull up the Crazy Ken Signal text messages. Okay, so according to what, oh, we're getting some flicker. Ooh, that, ooh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that looks great. That, that looks freaking awesome. So according to, oh, Okay, so he said sometimes it continues working and sometimes if he does a reboot, it just beeps at him. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's hung here now. Let's just do a power button, hard restart here. Okay. Three, two, one, back up. Yep, there we go. Three beeps typically means there's a RAM issue. Oh, yeah, it's gonna keep doing that. So let's bust this baby open. Take a look at the RAM. Maybe it just got jostled loose. Maybe it's fried, I don't know. Let's uh, prep for surgery. Doctor, scalpel, corceps, mayonnaise. Poof, it is gone. Le voila, towel for protection. There we go, smooth that out. Doctor. All right, little Phillips screwdriver ought to do the trick. I've taken these things apart more times than I can count. Okay, don't take my word for it because that's the wrong size. Okay, at least it's not a pentabular screw. I know I bought a kit for that a while ago, but I don't know where I left it. So it's uh, floating around in the nether somewhere. Oh, this one seemed to work. I don't know, I did use a, ooh. Yeah. I did use a little more force that time, so maybe that's what did the trick. All right, I got every other screw out except for this little guy's being a dick. There we go. Just had to give it a little kick in the butt. All right, let's see what's inside. All right. So pretty standard stuff. You got your hard drive, your battery, and your electronics, your fan, your speaker. Optical drive, here is our RAM. This could be the problem spot. Okay, so it looks like he has two four gig sticks installed. I have two two gig sticks. So even if the RAM I have is compatible, he's gonna be stuck with half the memory. So I think it's best if I just order some more of whatever brand this is. Let me actually bust this out. I love how easy that is. Look at that, that's just, the little Apple Touch, you know? Okay, let's have a peek. I mean, it, it's definitely not exactly the same, but it looks like it'll fit. So here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm gonna order some more of this memory with the user's permission because they will pay for it and everything will be great. But first, I'm gonna test this memory to see if that even rectifies the problem before I bill them. So, let's take this next one out. There we go. Set those guys off to the side. That black RAM looks way cooler than this blue stuff. I had a 2011 MacBook Pro many moons ago. I'm pretty sure that's what this RAM is from. So let's flip that around. Let's put that in there. Don't want to block your view entirely. There we go. That feels like it went in. Keep it clean. <laughs> don't, don't go there, man. Slide it in. Click. Stick. Okay, well, let's put the bottom case back on, boot her up, and see what happens. Okay, to be honest, I took kind of the lazy way out. I didn't even screw it back in. I just kind of placed the case on and let gravity and friction do the rest. Hopefully that doesn't frick everything up. All right, here we go, ready? Oh, that's a great sign. <laughs> yeah, that RAM's probably not compatible with this system, so. Yeah, this, uh, I don't remember what year this computer is, but Turn off, you asshole. Yeah, I'm sure the RAM's just straight up not compatible. I'm just gonna have to buy the RAM, see if it works, and if it does, great. If it doesn't, well, that's what return policies are for. All right, so it's been a few days since I've been able to touch this project, but I did get some new crucial memory, which will actually fit and be compatible with the system. Now, in the downtime, I was talking with Greg from Rutke Mods, and he suggested that the pins on the board might be bad. So I didn't document this, but I took some time like flipping the sticks around and just experimenting with different combinations of one stick, two stick, red stick, blue stick, just kidding. Uh, one stick, two stick, one stick in one slot, one stick in the other slot, just flipping it around. Sometimes it would boot, sometimes it would not. So yeah, the pins on the board very well could be bad. We're gonna put the new RAM in here and see what happens. However, if it doesn't make a difference, I'm just gonna return the new RAM because there's no point in spending the money if it doesn't do jack shit. If the if one of the pins, if like one of the rows of pins or one pin on a certain row is certainly bad and we can deduce that, well, then I'll just leave one stick in here in the good slot. It's not super optimal and you're gonna lose some memory, but at least it will boot. So let's do that. Pop these boys out. All right, I'm gonna open up the new RAM. There's one. Okay, and that's installed. So we'll get the bottom case back on. We won't screw it in place. We'll just do the lazy method like last time. Okay, brand new RAM is installed. There is a speckle on the screen. There we go. So the brand new RAM is installed. If this still fails, then yeah, we're gonna assume it's a problem with the board. Also, I know, I'm like really teasing you with the suspense right now. I thought after like not touching this for a couple weeks, the battery would be totally dead. Nope, still has like 80% charge. Good batteries. All right, please work, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh. No, oh, come on, man. Still be, dude, okay. So the other RAM is probably fine. We could just stick to that, if that's the case, and just put a stick in the slot that is actually not damaged. Again, not super optimal, but at least it would boot. Okay, we're just gonna put these back in. Actually, the funny thing is, while I was working on this project, another viewer messaged me with a similar problem. They put new RAM in, and yeah, still nothing. So, looks like we're in the same boat. Boot her back up, and I'm guessing it won't work. Yep, okay. So now, I'm gonna do what I did earlier, off camera, but now I'm gonna actually do it on camera. Let's just try putting 
one stick in the top slot and then see if that boots. Here we go. There we go, guys. So, can we assume that the bottom slot is bad? Certainly could be possible. But yeah, we maybe just keep the system like this. At least it boots this way. It would be the free solution. If uh, the user wants both slots working, then something else is gonna have to be repaired. But if they can stick with one slot, you know, whatever. So if you have four gigs of RAM, it's better to have two two gig sticks than one four gig stick. But if having the two sticks causes the system not to boot, well, then you're kind of out of options, unless you repair the board. So yeah, you might as well just stick with the one. And yep, looks like it's almost done booting here. There we go. So, so far so good. Let me shut this down and just, for shits and giggles, try the bottom slot. All right, flip her over. Take it out of the top and try to boot. Yeah, yeah. It's that bottom slot. I will put this back in the other slot and return the crucial RAM. Hopefully there was a return policy on it. Haha, <laughs> I probably should have read the fine print. Uh, yeah, I will return that because we don't need it. All right, I'm gonna hit the pause button right there because I have some other developments going on. So for starters, I just wanna say this tech video log was actually taped probably a couple months ago already. And I've learned quite a bit about these MacBook Pros thanks to Jay from the House of Moth and Macyak. I haven't confirmed exactly what model this computer is, but it is likely one of those 2012 notebooks that had a very common failure with the pins. So this isn't just a me issue. And this laptop was originally owned by college students on a college campus that plus this Apple defect, oh my gosh, who knows what could have happened damage-wise and handling-wise. And Jay shows in this video how loose these pins can get. But all of these are loose. And what that results in, when you lean on the palm rest, you get black bars on the screen, kernel panics, random freezes, or it doesn't even boot up, it just beeps three times. And he also points out how Apple took some steps to try to manage the issue, but of course they ultimately failed. This pad applies pressure on the other side of the of the RAM bay, kind of in the hopes that it squishes these pins into the board. Of course that failed, so there's a, a lot of later generations, they put a second layer of padding on here to squish it even harder into the board. Of course that failed, then Apple started putting Instead of these being straight pins down, they put little feet on the end of each pin, hoping to get more surface contact with the solder and the pad underneath. Of course, it didn't work, so the pins still become detached. These models were sold from 2012 to 2016. So this problem is gonna be around for a very long time. Also, I'd just like to mention the return process was absolutely delightful. It took weeks to hear back from the seller through Newegg. I eventually got a hold of them, and now I'm kind of procrastinating with the return on my end. Not to get back at them, I'm just kind of procrastinating, but yeah, it took a while for them to reply to me for some reason. But also, I'm a little suspicious about this support message. Mm-hmm, yeah, Harold. I'm sure that's your real name. Ultimately, it seems like everything's fine. I do have to pay for return shipping and make my own label, which is interesting. But uh, I'll get that taken care of. Put that back in. Just make sure it's still working. Yep. Okay. We now have an action plan. It is now up to the user as to whether or not they want to stick with a single four gig stick, spend a little money to get a single eight gig stick, or spend a lot more money and get the board repaired so they can use both slots again. So yeah, if anything else happens with this, I will let you guys know, catch the crazy, and pass it on.